In this video we're going to look at hardware and software. Uh, hardware is the physical electrical components of a computer system. Examples of typical hardware components are motherboard, printer, RAM, solid state storage. Uh, those are the kind of examples. We say hardware are the things that we can see, the things that we can touch. But when you're looking for the actual definition, it is the physical electrical components of a computer system. It is the hardware that software runs upon. Software on the other hand are the sequence of instructions that execute on the computer's hardware. Software is designed to perform a specific task. Examples of software, things like database software, spreadsheet software, presentation software, sound editing software, photo editing. For the rest of the PowerPoint we're going to look at classification of software. Software can be classified into two distinct areas. One of those is known as application software. Application software is used to perform tasks that are independent of the computer. For example, real world tasks. These are often known as user oriented tasks. These are tasks that we could complete without the use of a computer. For example, writing a letter. We can do this without having to use a word processor. Uh, generating stock control system. We could do this on paper without having to have a computer program. So application software performs tasks that are independent of the computer, performs real world tasks. The other split of software is system software. And system software performs tasks to run the computer's hardware. It performs machine oriented tasks. This kind of software acts as a layer of software that enables the user to operate the computer. System software comes in many different categories. An operating system is said to be system software, as are library programs, language translators and utility programs. Operating system is what um, provides an interface between the user and the hardware. It allows all of our software to run on it. The operating system is needed in order for the computer's hardware to be used. Utility programs, these are things like um, disk copying tool, disk defragmenter. So these are pieces of software that allow interaction with the hardware. So we may be copying a disk so it's using a hard disk drive or using a CD drive and copying that. Formatting a disk, so clearing actual storage space on the disk drive. Disk defragmentation tool. So as you can see these utility programs provide some kind of utility. We've got language translators. Now when we type source code into a programming language that must be translated into machine code. So language translators translate source code into machine code and types of language and translators that exist are compilers, interpreters and assemblers. Library programs are a bank of tried and tested routines that can be used by different software. Okay, what have you learnt? So what we'd like to do is draw out the diagram and fill in the spaces one, two and three with different examples. Pause the video now. Okay, if you said number one was an operating system, then you would be correct. For number two, you could have had a compiler or an interpreter. One other translator is an assembler. An assembler changes assembly language into machine code. For number three, a utility such as a disk copying tool, disk formatting tool or disk defragmenter would have been suitable or any other utility. So that is a summary of system software. Application software could be split into three distinct categories. So as we said, application software is used to perform tasks that are independent of the computer real-world tasks. 
Look at our types of software here. We've got general purpose applications, word processors, presentation software, spreadsheets, publishing software. These are used for many purposes, general purpose. We've also got special purpose, payroll, web browsing, stock control. These are used for special purposes, one particular task. Complete the following diagram. Pause the video while you do so. Number one was special purpose software. Number two was general purpose. Number three was system software. And number four was utility software. Operating systems are a fundal fundamental part of system software. The role of an operating system is to hide the complexities of the hardware from the user. Operating system manages hardware resources. It manages the hardware to allocate to processors, it allocates main memory, manages input and output devices and manages secondary storage. So an operating system is said to have two roles, hiding the complexities of the hardware from the user and the second role managing hardware resources. As a user we don't need to know how main memory works, we don't need to know how the processor is allocated, we don't need to know how our secondary storage is dealt with. As a user we use the computer, we perform tasks but we don't have to understand the complexities. That is often said it's the virtual machine. The virtual machine being the complexities of how tasks are done is hidden from the user. So you could pick up any device which has got an operating system on it and use it and you don't have to understand the intricate detail of the hardware behind it. In terms of processors, processor time is managed. If we've got a single core processor, we've got many processes that appear to be running at the same time. You could have many windows open many different programs open at once but only if you've got a single core only one program will actually be running at a time so how does it do that how to a user does it seem as if it is multitasking well, one idea is that we use time slicing and another is something known as scheduling So in terms of scheduling, let's take three processes, A, B and C. And we'll say that the processor will schedule to do process A. And it'll do it until it's finished. Once it's done that, it will do process B. And it will complete B until it's finished. Once it's completed B, then it'll complete C. And it'll do that till it's finished. The problem with this method is it will not seem like you are multitasking. You can only have one program going at a time and if a process starts you have to wait for it to finish. The best way is time slicing where each process is allocated a small amount of processor time, a time slice, and they rotate. So for example A will get a small amount of processor time and when that stops running then B will get a small bit of processor time and when that expires then C will get some processor time and then that will expire and then it will go back to A again and this will continue to repeat and the processor continually rotates between the active processes so each process is allocated a small slice of time until all execution finishes this then appears that many processes are taking place simultaneously and that's what gives was the sense that we are multitasking. Operating systems also allocate space in main memory. So the role of the operating system is to allocate our RAM space. Programming instructions and data will need to be stored in main memory so the processor can fetch these and execute them. The memory management is responsible for keeping track of which parts of the main memory are being used by each process. Here's an example. 
imagine we've got time slice B or process B process A process C and these are different memory locations memory locations are usually given with a hexadecimal address and this is the contents of that memory location so B may get allocated 1 to 4 A may get allocated A6 to A9 and so on one of the other jobs is the responsibility of storing data on a hard disk drive or our secondary storage so it may be a flash memory stick it may be an SD card a file will be stored in clusters spread throughout the disk the operating system will retrieve blocks of data from the hard disk and load them into main memory the complexity of keeping track of where a file is stored that is hidden from a user when you save a file file save as you do not need to know what sector what track what surface that that file is going to be stored in that complex complexity is managed by the operating system the operating system provides communication between peripheral devices and the computer a peripheral is a hardware device not directly connected to the CPU modern computers have to work with lots of different hardware devices printers mice keyboards monitors scanners people have different versions of these devices and each work in a different way so the operating system de manages how the computer communicates with that peripheral for example a printer a user may want to print something it will interrogate the operating system and it will choose file print the operating system knows whereabouts the printer is connected it knows where that peripheral device is it knows how to communicate with the printer the operating system will communicate some signals to the printer and indicate that a print job is ready to be printed. The print job will the printer will send signals back to the operating system to say that it has paper and it is ready to receive the print job. The operating system sends the job. The printer says thank you and prints the job. Once finished, the printer sends signals back to the operating system to alert the operating system that the job has been carried out. The user gets their printed document these are complicated jobs that the operating system manage so in summary we have looked at hardware and software but more specifically the software that governs computer systems